So my name is Sudar, my, my security engineer. Uh, work on various enterprise projects within T-Mobile. I'm here to share with you, like Brian identified the tools that allow to identify vulnerabilities within the web applications and infrastructure. So I'm here to uh, give you a demonstration about how we proactively take measures to stop those vulnerabilities not being affected to our corporate applications, enterprise applications, and mostly customer-facing applications. So why security requirements are important, right? So well, in not just the mobile space, even web applications, we see a lot of uh, evolving uh, security vulnerabilities and attackers are finding new ways to attack applications, right? So uh, this is a re recent study that was done uh, by Forbes magazine, and, and they have identified that 48% of mobile applications are vulnerable to unauthorized access. And, and, and these are pretty common, like Brian mentioned, to OWASP. So OWASP top 10 uh, recommends all of these in here, which are stated here. So uh, th these are some of the recent uh, results that were identified. So, so in, order, in order for those identifying proactively uh, putting in controls on the applications, we use a, this is a tool called SD Elements, uh, which is supported by a vendor security compass. So we, we have embedded this tool into our security lifecycle management where we get, uh, we, we use this tool to develop or to generate security requirements and share with our development teams as, as, as a process within the security lifecycle. So it basically uh, focuses on preventing the vulnerabilities in the first place uh, so that the developers can build secure applications uh, enterprise-wide. So uh, how does it work? It's a very simple tool. It basically takes about five minutes uh, to go through a survey of questions. And based on the input that you provided within this tool, it generates uh, security requirements, which are, are really, I'll show you the report of this. And it's, uh, it's no brainer. Anybody could read it and understand what, what the requirements are all about. So, uh, so once you finish the survey, uh, it runs an automated risk and analysis engine on the back of the system, and it generates these requirements. And uh, it, uh, it can also be integrated into any of your IDEs. So if you're using Eclipse or Visual Studio or anything of that, you can integrate this tool into, into your uh, IDE, and it provides a nice IntelliSense if you're doing a wrong coding, it tells you that you're not supposed to do this way. It violates this particular requirement. And uh, so it prioritizes each and every requirement that it generates. So it gives a scoring of 1 to 10 based from 10 being the highest priority and 1 being the very lowest priority. So, uh, so you, can, you can assign tasks to individual persons to take care of that 10 is being most critical to you that you want to make sure that you're going to address all the tens within these requirements. So and the, and the last one, the good thing about this tool is it also generates the test cases for these requirements. So which is a nice thing. You can use your uh, automated uh, web application scan results imported into this tool, and it automatically validates your test cases against your scans and makes sure that it gives you a nice report that it has passed, failed, or partially passed. And you can go back and check manually there. So I'm going to show you a quick demo how this tool works. Let's say we go here. Uh, if you're working on a new application, uh, we, we go here and uh, create an application. Say I'm going to call it as So this is the application. And you could create uh, more number of projects within an application. Uh, so I'm just going to call this as release 1.0. And in here, it gives you a nice way of choosing 
uh, what is that you're creating requirements for? So is it a web-based application or it's a mobile-based Android or iPhone? Or if it's anything related to the Java Enterprise Edition web applications and all other stuff. So let's, so let's pick Android as an application here. So in here, it uses the default settings that usually come out of the box. And, and it, it, if you look at down here, it, it has already generated security requirements based on the basic, basic standards that we want to build in into an Android application. So uh, here is project settings where it goes more granular level, what kind of an application you're building and what is the kind of data that your application is going to handle. So uh, these are the project settings, and, and these are the subtypes of your project settings that you're going to choose, right? So uh, the application type in here, we see that it's a mobile client. Or you could choose a mobile application, a web application, which means it's a HTML5 browser-based application that you develop. So uh, in, in components and architecture, it's a, you could keep changing these, so NoSQL database. So based on, based on the parameters that you select here, it keeps generating uh, the respective requirements into, into this project and, and the protocols that you use within this. So I say it's a HTTPS-based protocol. Uh, so and then the language and platform you have here, uh, since it's an Android, so by default it has chosen Java in here. And uh, so data formats. You know, JSON objects is one that you could choose. So the interesting thing is here is compliance requirements. And, and as you all know that you know today, web applications or mobile applications, they process credit card information on these applications. And they have to be in mandate with the PCI compliance and another regulatory com Compliance. So in here, so handles credit card information is in scope of this project, right? So it generates those requirements as well, uh, and it's a financial application. So it it puts in more requirements based on the kind of uh, data that you handle within these web applica mobile applications. So there, there's a health relate. So the privacy related is here. So you can you can answer these some of these questions in here. And the development test, test tools that using static code and dynamic code analysis. So th this is helpful because at the end, when you create these requirements and run an IBM app scan against an application, the identified scan results can be directly be imported into this application. So once we're done, we save this and close it. So in here, if you see, these are the requirements that it generated in here. And uh, architecture and design requirements, which also are generated and gives the highest priority for each one of it that we want to handle in the application development. And in, in the development, it, it here it also gives you a code snippet in case if you want to see how a sample code looks like. right? It gives you a. a code snippet in here, and these are your testing requirements. What are the test, test cases that you want to run against this mobile application? So th these are various requirements that it generates. And you could download it as a PDF format and, and use, this, use this to run through your development teams, explain them why these are important. And, and, and if we open it, one of them here, So let's open the file. So this is the report that it generates. So it, it, it shows 53 pages. The, the, the good thing about this is it explains you in detail what, what the requirement is about and what's, why do we need to have this requirement. So let's run through one of that. So this is a problem statement. Ensure confidential data is sent over a channel, encrypted channel. Right, so it, it rates as a priority 10 and gives you a solution. 
And if you don't know what this is all about, it gives you a training content why you have to encrypt that. So, the, you know, I know I've been a developer myself and I hate people pointing out at my code which is wrong, right? I won't listen to anybody if my team lead comes and tells me that you're wrong. I agree, I argue with him. But having shown this, I would agree that, yeah, my code is wrong, right? So it, it gives a nice presentation about how to address solutions and, and you know, it's a, it's a developer friendly requirements. So that's why it's, it's too huge in here. And, and the last one in here is the integration. So you could bring in your scan results directly. You can choose any of these scanned results and import them directly into this and it verifies your test cases against your mobile applications. So th this is the demo, of, the overall demo of the product. So any questions? Sure. In the back. Uh, I don't need Okay. What does the product cost? That's so a good the question was, well, how much does it cost? <laughs> so I, I'm not here to promote this. We, we're not here to promote this. This is one of the tools that we use in our security lifecycle management practices at T-Mobile. So I'll, I'll tell you how much it costs for like 500 bucks. Then. <laughs> 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 it looks like a great tool. <laughs> so it's, it's rated as Forbes 10, uh, top 10 tools, and uh, recently they have received a Gartner Cool Tool Award as well. Yeah. Any other questions? So in your example, you had uh, don't send uh, or use encryption over for, for confidential data. Does it also have the current, uh, like, heart uh, vulnerabilities? So, yes. So the way the tool works is that it has a backend database where they use common weakness enumerations and this database gets updated frequently every two weeks, one month, every once. So when, when they start updating the signature files on the backend database, so it automatically brings in all those things and it reflects your requirements when you generate them. So they're, they're kind of dynamic comparing to the industry standards. So the training and education for the end user or developer, does it, does it list the open SSL? Issues themselves, or is it back end? You never see the actual code. Yes. So the question is like, does it have the the CVE number or something? Sure. Yes, it does. So, I mean, um, can I mention that it scan the code also, right? Yeah. So, no, this tool doesn't scan the code. You could import the scan results into this tool. Oh, okay. So we have to use a separate. Correct. So the, the tools okay. there, over our code, IBM App Scan, and all that. Oh, okay. You could use so that. That tools is the compatible with this tool. Correct. Okay. So they work with various third-party vendors outside the industry, <coughs> oh, okay. and that's how they get integrated. Oh. It's that's not the best case at all. Other than Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.